Continuing our series on hydraulic pumps, let's take a look at this external gear type pump. So we can see that we have two shafts with gears on them. They're external cut gear teeth that ride and connect to each other. But we see the pumping action would actually happen in this direction only. And so what we look at, if we try and see the ports, we can see a port right here and we can flip this over and we see another port on the other side. So to try and give a point of reference, we see that the, this is the smaller port and this is the much larger port. This would be our inlet then, and our inlet would be larger to prevent cavitation as our gear pump creates a low pressure area and is often used as the priming pump if there was to be a priming pump in the system. So it's really common for a gear type pump to create its low pressure area. So to try and fill that area as much as possible and prevent cavitation, the inlet restriction, we have a larger inlet port and a smaller outlet port. This gear type pump would create a low pressure pocket on this side as those gear teeth move away. They create that low pressure, they create a larger space there, draws the oil in, and then that oil will actually travel around the outside in these gear pockets, these gear tooth pockets, between the outside of the gear teeth and the housing. So that would be the trapped pockets. The volumetric efficiency of a gear pump then is always limited by the gear end clearance. We have the high pressure plates that try and squeeze the gear teeth on the ends, on the ends right here, to try and increase some volumetric efficiency but we know we always suffer as this pump wears out, we're gonna suffer where the gear teeth ride into the housing and eventually we get gear end clearance and our volumetric efficiency will go down. These shafts are often supported by either a roller bearing, a needle bearing, or a friction type bushing. This, these grooves right here would be the high pressure seal pack would be riding and squeezing against the pressure plate to cause our increase in volumetric efficiency. That would be this aluminum piece right here, be squeezing down against the gear ends. So as we rotate this, we can see the pumping action would be coming in from the bottom to the top around the outside of the gear teeth. And as the gear teeth come together, what happens is the pocket collapses. So right here, we'll see those gear teeth will almost contact each other. So if we really look inside of there, we can see those gear teeth just about touch one another and they create a high pressure pocket. When we look at the high pressure plates, what we're gonna see is there's a small groove that allows that oil to leak past. Instead of causing that high pressure to split the case open, it's just directed back to the high pressure outlet port. So we can see from this design then that a gear pump is a unidirectional fixed displacement pump in the fact that we are going to allow the gear teeth to move in one direction to have one inlet and one outlet and then it's fixed displacement in the fact that we cannot change the gear tooth pocket size. You may find that you'll run into a external gear type pump that attempts to be variable displacement but really all it's doing is often it has multiple external gear pumps and one of them is simply unloaded at a preset pressure. That's different from being a variable displacement. That's simply an unloader control. So the displacement stays the same. It's just where that displacement goes. Otherwise, because of the fixed gear tooth size, this is otherwise a fixed displacement. Because of the seal that's made by the gear teeth ends to the housing and the flat sides of these gears to the pressure plate, we see that this is also what's called a positive displacement pump in the fact that it'll produce a lower volume but a very high pressure. So gear pumps are some of our lowest volumetric efficiency pumps, but they are also our most tolerant pumps of contamination. So you'll see them used in a lot of scavenging operations and in a lot of applications that involve moving either dirty or contaminated oil as they're likely to last the longest in that adverse condition.